Well, I am here with Lynn Suprock, and I am gloved up and ready to go because we are making some magical, mystery, fantastic garden balls. I don't even know what to call them. They're just shiny and cool, and I love them. Gazing balls is what we call them. Because you just them. gaze at them you and just, can't look you away. Can't look away. I think they're coming in favor again. People have them in their yards or on their lawns, and they're in some of the hobby stores. Um, so that's kind of where I got my inspiration for them. Oh, yeah. I was going to say it totally yeah, looks like a crystal I, ball or like a magical something. You could use it in cosplay do you or ever anything. Just walk Walk through though and say that's gorgeous. I love that. I, I have to have that. I can make that. Oh yeah. So um, this was an inspiration, you know, just from doing some shopping because I needed something for my yard. But you can make gazing balls that set on their own stands, and they're made from the modeling compound we're going to use. You can also make the stands out of that. And I also think you can hang them in your trees. It's waterproof, mm. rainproof, mm. snowproof because underneath we'll have something that won't chip or crack or. That would be a fun way to decorate a snowman or something oh, like that, well, or like really, you absolutely. know, jazz things up. Absolutely, and you can make the snowman any color that you'd like because this compound, although today we're going to choose to use black and there's white out here on the table, but there's different colors it comes in and then you can also mix those colors to make other colors. So so essentially you're picking your grout because it's based on a mosaic and you can make your grout any color that you want. Right. And of course, if you were using let's say less colored stones, fewer colors of stones, you right. might choose something you other than black. You want the background to pop, yes. so that'll be your emphasis, right. But it doesn't have the consistency of grout. It's really malleable, it's a molding compound, so it's, it's nice to work your hands. It is a little sticky. Sometimes people like to wait a little bit, like an hour you can wait, it's less sticky. It'll still adhere to the styrofoam ball. I already have a, a ball done here. So just to be clear, part, this is a plain old styrofoam ball, Right. And you've just put some clay around it's it. It's solid styrofoam, and the clay. What's the? There are balls that are not solid well, I, styrofoam. They're, they're, I don't know, or half balls, or okay. You know, I, don't, okay. I don't. I don't. It's a solid. It's what it says. It's on a the label. solid styrofoam solid. ball. So anyway, okay. you have this uh, uh, modeling compound that will stick to that styrofoam. You don't have to adhese it. You don't have to. Um, you know, add anything else. Um, you just mix it and put it on the ball. So how do we mix so it? That's the next step here. We're going to take some utensils to help get the right ice amount cream on time. here. Yeah, a little bit of ice cream, uh, but not really. Don't you, eat it. Don't you eat don't it. You don't want to use it these. It looks good enough. You, to you eat, don't want to use these it. afterwards either because it's not good for right. for kitchen. But um, you, it's, you don't have to be precise. It's going to be about an amount. Okay? okay. So I have part A and A scoop always used with A. And then there's B, B scoop always with B. So I'm going to just pull out. Because you don't want to contaminate the containers That's correct. in any way. Because obviously. if you do a little bit more, if you do contaminate, then they it hardens up in the right, which container. You don't want. No, and then you kind of ruin your whole bucket of stuff. So I have two um, balls that I'm going to mix together. And then, now it's interesting. I've seen people have it all different techniques for mixing. So some people do like two snakes and they twist the snakes and then they like turn it. But you are. Ah, oh, do ooh, your technique. Let's okay. technique off. Let's technique off. Let's see. So okay. let's see who can do it faster. That's right. <laughs> so, Don't so do this at home. So it's all over your floor. What color are we going You're for? You're going to blend the two so that what in the end, really, and it only takes a few minutes, you want the two colors to blend together. So I don't so see. So should it be a gray or will it stay it's black? It's going to stay black because that's a dominant okay. color in this clay um, You just don't want to see any, I assume, marbling. Streaks, no marbling. And yours looks pretty good. Okay. I won, but okay. <gasps> you did. We're going to put it together. Okay. <laughs> and so once we have that together, and I want to break it off because we don't need that much, you just do a pancake type of a motion with it. You don't roll this out. You don't have to put it through any kind of pasta maker. You just take, you know, bits and pieces and flatten it like a pancake, maybe the thickness of a quarter. And then you just apply it all the way around the styrofoam ball. And it just kind of sticks to itself. And then you smooth it out with your gloves. You see how I'm just pressing that? Yeah. We're so you're covering the whole thing and then once you actually have it covered, and we can talk about that, do you roll it to smooth it? Do you just smush it in your hands? Just smush it in your hands. Okay. I have a sample here that actually will show you how thick you want that clay to be or okay. approximate because it depends on the tiles. Thicker tiles, thicker clay. Right. So you're going to you know, kind of make that judgment call mm -hmm. and I always, in case I want to hang these small ones in a tree, I'll make a little top I'll just twist a piece 
and adhere it like that. And this is, uh, this compound will stay up itself mm -hmm. pretty much, so we could air dry in 24 hours. It's um, that would to me be that hard. you say that you're adhering it just because all you did was push it down and I'm <laughs> expecting to see glue or whatever. Right, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to use any of that. So that that is what happens. And so when you want to add then your um, mosaics, you can do that, you have an hour to two hour window. So if you would like to help me add those mosaics, oh, when we could just comes stick to shiny them in things, there. I will hold that. So are these glass? Just are they porcelain? Really push them oh, in there. Oh, I did not want to get aggressive. No, because that'll kind of push up. That'll Arr. give the. There you go. That'll give that grout look, and it comes up in between, you know, the beads. So I do see that. So you yeah, could actually, you, you could get this prepped, and then you could give it to a kid with some gloves or something, and they could do their design. It's like cookie decorating that lasts forever. It, yeah, and they have their own sense of. Do creative. you do so? I find myself wanting to go like in a pattern. Is that what you do, or you just do it more random? I do it pretty random, and these were smaller tiles. Um, some of the samples you'll see. A cool thing to do is to put pennies in, oh, yeah. um, and then the copper shines in the sun, or you know, hanging in a so tree. So you can really embed almost anything. You could put beads, mirrors. Uh, I'm trying to think. Could Glass you pieces. Rocks? The, the big gazing ball is actual shells. If you look, it's, oh it's colored shells. That's so fun. And these are just glass pieces, and then there are jewels as do well. Do you know what a sailor's Valentine is? No. Okay, so a sailor's valentine is this sort of old-timey craft that sailors used to do to sort of kill time and do something with their hands, and they would take all these shells and other things that they found and make these incredible, intense collages. And I think they probably just use glue for that, but I'm starting to think that you could easily do that by just embedding shells into a frame. And I, I have a Sailor's Valentine and I love it. That They're amazing. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That is. that's a good project. Super cool. So once you have this whole ball covered, you maybe want to add a little texture to this because see it has kind of my marks yeah. from the glove. So we'll just step over here and then you could use a rubber stamp with hard rubber and um, I'm ashamed of myself, I don't really, every time I use I my stamp, I don't clean, clean anything. Them. But this is an ink project that was on here, it won't really hurt this. Okay. So you're just going to press over the area that you just put your tiles in and you'll end up texture tool. with some right and then you can use bigger texture tool if you've got wider is this spaces. A, is this like a trivet? This is a silicon trivet so that's pretty that's easy. Cool. And so once I have that all done there's one last step if you want. You don't yeah. have, you can leave it like this. I mm -hmm. like it like this or you could just do this which we have one here mm -hmm. and we use some metallic luster that we rubbed all over the texture part which makes that pop. Do you, so, so I have two questions. There's one, do you need to seal this? No. Okay. It's you can, but you don't need to. And two, right. do, do you need to wait until it dries to put the metallic Good question. On? You should, yeah, because if you rub it on while it's wet, you'll take off your texture. 